Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss an extremely recent paper that actually questions one of the most established propositions when it comes to the evolution of the solar system and the formation of planet Earth. This new study questions the formation of the Moon. And specifically, it questions what we usually refer to as the giant impact hypothesis. And obviously, it's a hypothesis for a reason. It's just a little bit too early to call this a theory, and like so many other scientific propositions, it can still be proven incorrect. And that's basically science at work. Once new evidence is presented, certain propositions have to be maybe reworked. And so let's actually discuss this new study by Paolo Sossi and his team on the composition structure and the origin of the moon, because the questions they ask and the answers they provide potentially do create a few problems for this hypothesis and the problems that are currently unresolvable. But I guess let's start with the basics. First of all, why do we even think the moon and earth came from the same object and were the result of some kind of a collision? Well, first of all, when it comes to our moon, compared to other moons in the solar system, it's just a little bit strange. It's a little bit too big, it's a little bit too planetary looking, and technically, if it wasn't orbiting planet Earth, it would have been its own planet. And that's because it's just a little bit smaller than Mercury. Here's roughly how their size compares to one another. On top of this, planet Earth and the Moon have just so many similarities in terms of composition and even isotopes that it's actually extremely difficult to explain if they were produced from different materials. For example, the isotope ratios in the lunar and the terrestrial rocks are practically identical, which does imply common origin. On top of this, the Earth-Moon system actually has a very anomalous high angular momentum. In other words, Earth and the Moon together spin really fast. And this revolution is so much difficult to explain without something external adding this angular momentum into the system. For example, some kind of a massive collision. That could maybe explain it. Likewise, by collecting a lot of lunar samples during the Apollo missions, we also discovered that Moon has something known as creep. Potassium, rare earth elements, and phosphorus, along with a lot of other unusual elements, all present in a lot of different locations on the Moon in high amounts. And this actually suggests that once upon a time, a really large portion of the Moon was completely molten. And it's kind of difficult to explain the presence of this lava ocean without some kind of a catastrophic event. Although there is at least one explanation we've discussed previously that you can learn about in one of the videos in the description. And the orbits of the Moon and planet Earth also have a lot of similarities. Both have a very similar angle to the ecliptic plane of the solar system and a very similar orientation. With many other clues basically suggesting some kind of a common origin. And so the combination of these observations and the collection of rocks during the Apollo missions basically give us just enough hints to imply the origin must have been a single event that produced both the Moon and planet Earth. With naturally other explanations of, for example, LLSVPs, really large structures inside planet Earth, even being suggested as the remnants of this collision, or basically the remnants of the collision with a smaller planet known as Theia that destroyed the early planet Earth and created modern planet Earth and the Moon. But interestingly, the original proposition for this hypothesis was from back in 1946, even before we knew most of this. But in the beginning, it wasn't entirely clear exactly how the Moon separated from Earth and what even happened to Earth in order for this to happen. For example, one of the initial propositions, known as fission, suggested that just like asteroids, Earth was spinning just a little bit too fast and a piece of it separated to create the Moon. But if there was an impactor such as Theia, it might have created a set of rings around planet Earth, which then hardened, cooled down, and coalesced into the Moon as we know today. Or maybe there were actually multiple impacts, which eventually created larger and larger rings, which then formed the Moon through a very similar process. On the other hand, maybe the collision was face-on and was so powerful that it basically created a kind of a cloud around the planet, which without even producing rings, produced the Moon through coalescing particles. Or maybe this collision completely destroyed the planet, forming a huge donut, which then coalesced into two separate objects. In other words, we had a lot of different propositions for how Moon might have formed from planet Earth, either without a collision or with various types of collision, from different types of objects. But the most accepted and the most favored hypothesis involved some kind of a Mars-like planet, very likely on the same orbit as planet Earth, colliding with Earth four and a half billion years ago, 
to essentially form the Moon only 100 million years after the formation of the solar system. And one of the main reasons why it's actually important to understand how the Moon formed is because today we believe the Moon itself is super important for maintaining conditions on the surface of the planet Earth and for maybe even kickstarting life on the surface as well. And that's because early Moon, because it was much closer to Earth, very likely had a tremendous effect on planet Earth and extremely likely was one of the main reasons life began on the planet just over 4 billion years ago. And so if we can understand how the Moon formed, we can maybe start looking for other similar objects out there in order to find extraterrestrial life. But naturally there were still some unanswered questions. For example, why is it that Earth only has one large moon? Why didn't this result in many moons, like for example around Saturn or Jupiter? On top of this, why didn't all of the heavy materials sink into planet Earth when the Earth was molten? Assuming that the impact did happen, at some point in the past, Earth probably had some kind of a lava ocean as well, and this would result in a very different composition on the surface. Interestingly, as of today, there seems to be no evidence for the existence of this lava ocean any time in the past. Likewise, why doesn't Venus have something similar? It also experienced collisions in the past, yet no moons whatsoever. And since there was so little evidence for any of this on the surface of our own planet, and also since the moon itself seemed to present us with different types of evidence, for many years certain scientists tried to basically rework this to try to understand if this is maybe not really a correct approach in trying to explain the origin of the moon. For example, one fact that doesn't really make sense is, moon has a lot of different types of water trapped on its surface. As a matter of fact, we've discussed these discoveries in some of the recent videos. But if there was any impact previously, and if the moon was actually created from this superheated rock, any presence of water or even carbon emissions from the surface of the moon would be practically impossible to explain. On top of this, if the moon was the result of a really powerful collision, we would actually expect quite a lot of enrichment in what's known as the siderophile elements, or basically various transition metals such as for example vanadium, chromium, manganese and germanium. But it turns out that the surface of the moon is actually deficient in these elements. So something here doesn't really add up. But the biggest issue with this hypothesis, according to this new study, is just the fact that isotopes, and here we're talking about isotopes on the moon and on planet Earth, are just way, way too similar. For example, the moon's titanium isotopes appear ridiculously close to the ones we find on Earth. There's only like 4 parts per million difference, which basically suggests that the moon and planet Earth are literally the same object. Likewise, oxygen isotopes, which normally produce unique and very distinct signatures for every single object in a solar system, are also once again identical. And the thing is, if there was a collision from, for example, some kind of a Thay-like object, we would actually expect different isotopes of something somewhere, specifically different oxygen isotopes. Mostly because we expect oxygen to very likely be mixed in the ejecta that would result in the production of the moon. And so in that sense, the previous assumption, which you can kind of see right here, this is a simulation produced by NASA just a few years ago, would not produce isotopes that are identical. Here we still expect certain pieces of theia to be deposited in certain regions and thus produce different isotopes of either oxygen or maybe some other metals. Yet to date, every single isotope analysis revealed identical properties. For example, in 2010, it was discovered that chromium was also the same, and the same thing for iron, calcium, molybdenum, and pretty much everything measured so far. And if this collision did happen the way that you just saw in the simulation by NASA, we would expect certain differences somewhere. Somewhere out there, either on the moon or on planet Earth, we would see a trace of an impactor, specifically Theia, that would show us small differences in isotopes that would be difficult to explain unless they came from outer space. But so far, after decades of investigations, nothing discovered anywhere. Both objects are basically identical. And to the scientists behind this paper, this basically presents us with a bit of a challenge, or essentially they come to one conclusion. There is no certain evidence that giant impact ever took place. And so how the moon formed seems to be just as mysterious as it was 100 years ago, with maybe just one explanation making sense. The isotopes and everything else observed can only be explained if the impact was so powerful that it basically created a perfect mix of two objects that eventually somehow produced planet Earth 
and the moon. But producing such a perfect mix is also not that easy to explain. And so maybe both objects were actually formed from some kind of a well-mixed donut, or the more likely explanation is that maybe the moon was actually formed in a very different way. But what way? We have no idea. In other words, just to rephrase this, the issue is that the moon seems to be way too similar to planet Earth to actually be the result of a collision with a different object. Especially when it comes to different isotopes, like oxygen, that's usually extremely specific for every single object. And so maybe both objects were actually formed from the same cloud, from the same material, approximately four and a half billion years ago, but exactly what created this cloud and why this cloud produced two objects and not just a single planet, that's something we cannot answer. And so even though this cloud could have been created by some kind of a powerful collision, it could also have been just formed without anything major or anything catastrophic happening, and instead resulted in the production of what we could technically call a binary planet. Except that here one of the planets was really small. It was essentially the moon. And if this proposition is correct, and if there was no giant impact, and Earth and the moon were just formed from the same donut early on, it would actually imply that this is not really the moon maybe, but instead it's just a really small planet. Or basically Earth-Moon system would be best described as a binary planetary system, with one of the planets just being on a smaller side. Intriguingly, a study from last year even kind of provided more evidence for this by suggesting that the Moon was actually produced at the same time as every other planet in the solar system. Once again implying that maybe there was no impact, and maybe Earth and the Moon were formed at the same time from the same stuff. And because giant impact models usually predict tiny difference in isotopes between two planetary objects, and here we don't actually see these differences, right now the evidence against the hypothesis is actually a lot stronger than for it. But the thing is we're unlikely to know more about any of this until we actually have presence on the moon and until we can start collecting and studying rocks directly, or even more importantly, until we can assess and study the internal structure of the moon in order to understand what's going on on the inside. And once those studies are conducted sometimes in the next decade, we might finally have our answers. But until then, it's all just going to remain a hypothesis. We're not going to have exact answers or exact explanations, and the origin of the moon is just going to remain a mystery for at least a few more years. But at least for now, I personally found the study extremely intriguing, mostly because it's super thorough, it goes through every piece of evidence we have, and shows us maybe it's not really that strong of an evidence after all. And more specifically, scientists behind the study make a really good point in stating that right now the evidence for the hypothesis is super weak. And so that collision might have never really happened after all. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional studies or additional discoveries, or once we get more info from the moon itself. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.